Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching CHM Tech and today we're going to be talking about a new operating system called Fuchsia that is currently being developed by Google. So the story of Fuchsia, or at least the one that is publicly known so far, begins back in August 2016. It was right about the time that Android Nougat was being officially released. There was a lot of talk about the new features this version of the OS promised to bring, so in the Google spectrum of the tech world, all eyes were pretty much being pointed at that. But then, without any public announcement, this rather mysterious code was posted on GitHub, which suggested that Google was actually working on a whole new operating system, one called Fuchsia. Now, as of this moment, the info on this OS is relatively sparse, but there's still enough to spark interest in the world of technology. So, in this video, I'm going to try to explain the most important things. So, Fuchsia is reported to be an RTOS, or real-time operating system, which basically means that it's supposed to serve real-time applications that process data as it comes in, typically without buffer delays. Unlike Google's previous two operating systems, Android and Chrome OS, Fuchsia is not based on a Linux kernel. Instead, it's based on a new microkernel called Magenta. More specifically, according to the documentation on GitHub, Magenta is composed of a microkernel as well as a small set of user space services, drivers and libraries necessary for the system to boot, talk to hardware, load user space processes and run them, etc. Now Magenta itself is actually based on another kernel called LK, short for little kernel, which is designed for small systems typically used in embedded applications. According to the documentation, Magenta's inner constructs are based on LK, but the layers above are actually new. Now, just recently, Fuchsia was updated with a user interface called Armadillo. The UI is written using Flutter, which is a software development kit used for creating apps for different platforms like Android and iOS. Currently, Armadillo features a card-based design. The base section features a profile picture accompanied by info on the day and time and a little battery icon. Tapping on the profile pic opens a card that displays additional battery and network information, sliders for volume and brightness, as well as a few settings buttons. Swiping from the bottom up gives us a list of cards labeled as suggestions, on top of which we can see a feature prompting us to ask for anything. Tapping here will reveal a basic keyboard with limited functionality compared to smartphone keyboards we are accustomed to these days. Finally, swiping from the top down will reveal another series of card-like space holders, most likely for future apps. The cards go full screen when you tap on them and appear to be optimized for multitasking as you can stack a number of them on top of each other, almost like you're creating a folder in Android, in order to get a sort of multi-window view. Now, the big question everyone is currently asking is why does Google need a third OS and what devices are they planning to use it on? And there are a lot of speculations going on right now. One of the more interesting things some people are speculating is that Fuchsia might even replace Android, but then again, it's very important to remember that as of this point, there are no official statements from Google, so it's all just speculation. We do know that Magenta targets modern phones and modern personal computers, quote, with fast processors, non-trivial amounts of RAM, with arbitrary peripherals doing open-ended computation. So, yeah, at this point, anything is possible. Anyways, that would be all for now. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, well, you know the drill. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Stay strong.